Broadway. Um, will you be doing Broadway again? Or I'm, how long will you be with the show? Uh, I am contracted through January of next year, as well as, uh, as Daniel Radcliffe is, and so he and I will stay till then. And then I don't know, you know, I mean, it's been a long time because of my high class problem of being on a television series or other for the last 25 years. I never had a year to give to New York. And I'm very happy that uh, after Boston Legal ended, I said to my, my peeps, whatever they call them, that I'd rather not pursue another television series to come back here and just see if there was any interest. And I, I, I did a bit of a boot camp here last summer. I did an off-Broadway play at the Cherry Lane. I used to live here as an actor. I never worked here as an actor. I, the first time I came to New York as an actor was to host Saturday Night Live. So I, didn't, I wasn't aware of the city. I didn't know it. I didn't grow up here. I grew up in New Orleans. And so I came here to do that. And, and I was just fortunate enough for this part of this play and Daniel Radcliffe to all fall in my lap, as it were. So it's, it's a great way to lose your virginity. Yes, sir. Speaking of um, Daniel Radcliffe falling into your lap, the, the height differential between you two guys is just a great thing to play off all the way through. Yes. Is that, um, did that happen immediately with the choreography to draw that sort of yeah, I think, and also Daniel and I worked together a lot alone, and um, you know, it became apparent that there was a you know a, a, a comedy element there that we we, I, we we never actually we never we never mention it. I never you know there's no there's no physical business specifically that that points that out, but just the image of this uh, you know six foot five guy next to this shorter than six foot five fellow uh, is just funny, and he's a great physical comic, and I, I sort of pride myself on having some agility physically with comedy. And we got, and, you know, just worked out a lot of that stuff. The leapfrog with me just going my leg over him without jumping was happened in rehearsal one day. And much of that happened as he and I just started working out the number. Right up front. What do you like better about performing on stage in front of real people and getting an immediate reaction compared to your TV career? Well, you know, quite frankly, most of my television career has been in front of an audience every Friday night. You know, 10 years on Night Court, uh, five years on the John Laurel Cat Show, other sitcoms. So 20 years of my 30-year career has been every Friday night there would be 350 people at the sound stage of Warner Brothers and we would perform it for them. And we did it in sequence. Of course, sometimes we back up and repeat as we always do if something goes wrong. But so an audience was not at all an, a new element to me at all. Um, I enjoy playing in front of an audience, the energy they give you. I mean, audiences become the single organism within like four minutes, I think, of curtain going up. And they become an individual almost. And you play to them, you feel them, you feel their energy, you don't let them dictate. But audiences do dictate rhythm, obviously. It's great, because some of the funniest, and I, I've said this in other, other places, but some of the funniest things that ever happened, particularly on Night Court, were because we had to hold while the audience was laughing. You're not going to step on and laugh, you're not going to say the next line until they can hear you. And you have to fill that time. So a lot of the physical business that I created, that Harry Anderson created, that Daniel and I create on stage, particularly like at the end of Old Ivy, me feeling my pulse in my throat, I knew. You know, just to fill that time to be still alive, and some funny things happen because of that. So I love audiences, they're the best. Yes, ma'am. Do you remember the first play you did, or the first time you were on the stage? Yeah, I was a, I was a senior in high school. I only did one play uh -huh. until I did one, uh, and it was called Ask Any Girl. Uh -huh. It was a little famous movie, I think, with David Niven or anything. But I did that in high school, <clears throat> and I didn't act again until I moved to Los Angeles when I was 27 to pursue acting. I was a DJ in the 60s in New Orleans for a long time in underground radio, and so I acted on the radio a bit, but... What do you remember about that experience doing that first play? The sort of the adrenaline and, and the sort of fix that you get from an audience laughing at something you say. I mean, it's, you know, uh, there are drugs and then there's laughter. You know, that's pretty cool. Yes, ma'am. What's the most mortifying or embarrassing thing that ever happened to you on stage? I knocked myself out on stage once, <laughs> um, and it was a play in which the uh, to the actors it was pitch black on the stage. It's called Black Comedy by Peter Shepard, and so they couldn't help me. And I ran across the stage and hit a wall, and literally fell behind the couch, knocked out the audience. Thought it was hilarious, but I'm profusely bleeding from my forehead, and had to try. And I started wiping my hands all over the cast members, and they couldn't respond. And so it was covered in blood by the time I was done. And I ran into the stage manager, saw it right off stage. So it was pretty mortifying. You know what? I'll even top that. And I don't think I've ever told the story. I was on my way to the theater one night for opening night of a play, and I was arrested. <laughs> my wife was with me. This is like 1977. And I was arrested and taken downtown Los Angeles. So my wife went ahead to the theater and told the director, uh, by the way, the leading man has just been, he's in jail. And the house was full. Small house, 100 people. And so the director got on stage and said, you know, our leading man has just been arrested. We're trying to raise bail money for him. They took a collection in the theater for my bail, <laughs> went and bailed me out. I came and did the play, and it was the best performance I think I've ever given. And luckily it was a play in which I can add little.
was going to go, who the hell is making up? It was a play in which I could add live a lot, so it was it was great. It was a great performance for that. Right back here on the left. Yes. John Ryan with the Theater Mania. Hi. Thank you. Tell me you. a little bit about what it was like performing on the stage tonight. Well, you know, we, we know this number so well, it's a little different when you look down in front and you see Kelsey and you see Al Pacino and, you know, that, you know, they're such luminaries just sort of staring up at you. But it's still just the number, you know. We got out there and we did the number. We did it this morning. This morning? <laughs> yes, we did it this morning. Taped it in case, I guess, something goes wrong. But, you know, you don't think about that. You just do the number. So it was, it was, it was lovely performing in that beautiful theater, that's for sure. What did you do to get arrested? What did I do to get arrested? Yeah. I did not yield to a pedestrian in a crosswalk. <laughs> and in California in the 70s, that was verboten. And I happen to have just maybe a few outstanding tickets <laughs> <laughs> that they found in the computer. Yes, sir. Um, so talk to us. You spent a, you know, a life in television. Now you're standing up in here in front of us with a Tony, which is arguably the best you know, accolade for any actor to have, as they say, is, you know, that acting is really on the stage. How do you feel? What is the what is the best memory you have of this entire experience? Well, there's no memories yet since I'm still experiencing it. But um, um, unlike most people, I don't take pictures of my life every second to remember. Oh, I'm having, am I having a good time? I'm having a good time. Look at No, but you know, I, I've been fortunate to receive you know five accolades in the in the television world, the highest award the television has to give, and you know, to as an actor, the first thing you think about is the stage. When I was a boy growing up in New Orleans. I, I went to the theater when I could, the little theaters in the French Quarter, and thought that would be just a phenomenal thing, and looked at the interaction and felt the, the energy that, that came from that. And for this community to, to not only welcome me for the first time ever being on Broadway, but to embrace me enough to, to offer me uh, this sort of uh, honor is a spectacular feeling. And I actually was, I don't, you know, I'm not a very emotional fellow. I say that for the stage. But walking up <clears throat> to receive this, I, I felt myself choking up, which I don't normally ever do, except watching my children play music. Is it? Yes, sir. One more. You said you haven't spent time in New York before this, so how would you say it's going for you? Uh, you know, I love it. I mean, I, uh, the first time I ever came to New York actually was when I was uh, 18 years old trying to sell an, uh, a record album that I had made in New Orleans with a bunch of friends. And it was August when I got here, and I, I traveled from New Orleans to here. And I got off the plane, and my first thought was, how the hell did I just travel 3,000 miles north and it's 90 degrees and 100% humidity, just like it was in the French Quarter when I left home? I, lo I love New York. You know, I don't, I don't know it well. I'm learning it. Uh, my wife is scurrying about finding restaurants and bookstores. I'm an avid book collector. So I, there, there are guys here I deal with at Argosy and other places in Strand, and, uh, first, the first edition book dealers. And it's a wonderful place to walk around. I mean, it reminds me a little bit of New Orleans because of the closeness, because of the aroma. <laughs> um, on a hot night, the rain, it, there's a lot of it that's reminiscent of my hometown, so I'm, I'm liking it very, very much. Yeah, that's it. Thank you all very much. Thank you.